don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Now either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's finally freaking Friday, and uh, we are happy to be here at the Red Brick House at our studio, part two. Um, we've got a lot of stuff that's going on. You know, we are all pissed off cowboy fans and everybody wants their pound of flesh everybody is literally pissed off and they want somebody to be held accountable for it now we all will go through and we will blame people and so on but we don't get to the root problem the root problem in the bottom line is and, and i'm going to say that I have literally gone through here and I try and make rationale of some of the moves the Cowboys make. Not everything that they do is wrong. They're not wrong when they say when you overspend in free agency. They're not wrong on that because too many times we've seen people swinging for the fence and it ends up just not being good. And typically free agents, here's the thing you got to understand. Typically, free agents have a short shelf life of typically two years. And if you don't hit on them and use that two years, you're usually left with dead money. And that is a fact. That There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. They are right on that. However, you still need to use free agency as well when you have problems and holes that you can't fix throughout one draft. You can't. You must. You can't just ignore free agency all the way around. Now, I, I, I guess we could say they don't ignore it all the way around, but they need to do a little bit more. They need to get a few more players that may be younger, that may have a longer shelf life than going necessarily for the older guys. Typically, the Cowboys' free agency is we will hire a named player past their prime so we can sign them to a veteran minimum, you know, give them a few more dollars than what the contract actually is and end up being cheap. And part of this reason is, is because they pay, you know, they, they, they draft well and they get, you know, top five type players that have to get paid. So right now, everybody is pointing to the Cowboys and saying it is Dak Prescott is greedy and he is taking all the money because if he were on a rookie deal like Brock Purdy, then the Cowboys would be out there spending money. But because his cap number has dropped from 59 to 55, it's still too high for the Cowboys to do something. So the question you have to ask right now is, and I'm, I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask the question. If the Cowboys were to sign Dak Prescott, get his contract done. Do you think, let, let, let's say hypothetically, the Cowboys go through and they get the ultimate team-friendly deal. And let's say that, you know, Dak says, you know what, I'm going to give you a six-year deal where two years of it are voidable and we're going to get our cap number down to like 17 million, give you like 40 million more in cap room. Do you then think that the Cowboys would go out and spend that money? That's what I'm going to ask <clears throat> realistically. Do we believe that the Cowboys would say, we're flush with cash. Now we're going to go out and spend it, even though it's a little too late right now, because they could have done something like that. Because here's the thing about it. I, I want to impress upon you guys because we've got guys like Dan Orlowski who is about the dumbest jackass out there. I, I'm sorry. 
I, I don't, you know, and maybe he's made to be the village idiot for ESPN. But for whatever reason, you know, his whole thing is just get rid of Dak right now, which doesn't make any sense because whether he's on the team or not on the team right now, he's costing you $55 million this year and $40 million next year. There's no way around that. You can keep him, and it's going to cost you $90 million the next two years on the cap, or you can let him go today, and it's going to cost you $90 million on the cap. And as you look at teams out here, you know, literally trading chump change for Mac Jones and I guess you could get Zach Wilson. And I know we got Trey Lance and everybody believes that he's going to be the next Joe Montana, although he's only got 103 passes in his NFL career and only like 350 in his college career. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you – I want to impress upon you guys something. You literally could take Trey Lance's college career and professional career and basically say that's about 10 games of experience for Dak Prescott, passing-wise. We're talking about college and pros. But be that as it may, maybe he ends up being the greatest thing since sliced bread. So here's something that I want to bring up, okay? Because I want you to look at the numbers here. <clears throat> I want you to keep in mind that Dak Prescott, his first year, we, we were taking dead money because of Tony Romo's contract, got $680,000. 680000 His second year, with the Cowboys, he got paid $680,000. His third year for the Dallas Cowboys, he made $680,000. Because he played so well, he got a boost from the NFL PA, which took him his fourth year to $4 million, excuse me, to $2 million. So for the first four years of Dak Prescott's contract, first four years he made a little over four million dollars i know we had dead money from tony romo taking care of his contract but um how many big free name free agents did we sign during that time seriously seriously Okay, so then his fifth year, the Cowboys paid $31 million because they decided we need him to prove it and took the biggest cap hit of his career. And after that, in 2021, they decided to finally get him his long-term deal. Okay, so I want you to understand we went from 31 million, right? Now, 31 million in 2021 was a lot of money. I mean, that was the average of the top five quarterbacks, okay? This is before there were, you know, a whole lot of $40 million guys. So this is relative because here's the thing after the Cowboys signed him, the next year, we ended up having $14 million less than we had to pay Dak Prescott that year. So the Cowboys got more money, right? The Cowboys got more money because they signed him to this deal in the short term. And I want to read to you all of the moves that the Cowboys made that offseason. Keanu Neal, whoa, dude. Safety Keanu Neal and Dallas Cowboys have reached a one-year $5 million deal, a source confirmed with ESPN on Saturday. Neil, 25, has spent all five seasons with the Atlanta Falcons. He played for Cowboys coordinator Dan Quinn. Okay? What it means, the safety market is uh, starting to sort itself out. Neil's deal maxes out at $5 million, falls in line with other veterans have received. 
Uh, but will he play safety or be moved to linebacker? Nothing is set in stone, but it is an option. Okay, of course, Dak Prescott was part of the free agent signing because he was actually a free agent. They were going to tag him, but they got the deal done to keep him from going. The next big free agent signing that we did after we got cap relief from Dak Prescott, Terrell Basham. Cowboys have agreed to a one-year deal with former New York Jets defensive lineman Terrell Basham. What it means, Basham comes to the Cowboys as a designated pass rusher, even though he has seven and a half sacks in 58 games. He has uh, a career-high three and a half sacks last season, along with 13 hurries. The Cowboys had him among their top 30 visits uh, in 2017 and kept an eye on him uh, this time with the Indianapolis. So that was another one of the big free agent signings, Terrell Basham. What's the risk? The Cowboys had some success with low-cost pass rushers like Jeremy Mincy and George Selvey. This has the feeling of a Benson Mua uh, signing from a few years ago as a restricted free agent. He had six sacks in his first season in 2016 um, of their addition so far. Basham might be the biggest. Yeah, he, he's the biggest. But he's been... Um, but they feel they have been playing holes while they're front while not taking them out of possibly moving players through the draft. Another big free agent signing, Carlos Watkins. Cowboys agreed to a one-year deal with Foreman Houston Texan lineman Terrell, oh, excuse me, Carlos Watkins. What it means, he provides depth to the defensive front that needs depth while he was a defensive end, uh, the Texas 3-4 scheme. Jordan Lewis, sound familiar? We re-signed him to a three-year deal worth $16 million. Offensive tackle, Ty Naseki. Ty Naseki. The former Buffalo Bills offensive tackle has agreed to a one-year deal with the Cowboys. Um, having lost last year's swing tackle, Cameron Irving, to the Panthers on a two-year $10 million deal, the Cowboys replaced him with another veteran in Ty Naseki who is entering his eighth season following a two-year run in Buffalo. Yeah. C.J. Godwin. You know, I always say that, you know, things have a way of repeating themselves. Jordan Lewis and C.J. Godwin both re-signed in 2021. Both re-signed in 2024. So I guess this means Ty Prescott's deal is going to be done because it's the same year. Cowboys agreed to terms of cornerback on a two-year, $3.5 million deal that includes him being guaranteed. The Cowboys have retained one of their best special teams players, and he's the staple on every unit. Okay. Long snapper, Jake McQuaid. We re-signed our, wait a minute. We, we re-signed our long snapper this year. Oh, my God. This just gets worse. Okay. Um, Brent Urban. Defensive tackle. The Cowboys have agreed to a one-year deal with the Cowboys. Brent Urban, six foot seven, two hundred and ninety-five pounds, had thirty-six tackles and two and a half sacks in sixteen games for the Bears last season. Safety, J. Ron Curse. The Cowboys have agreed to one year deal with former Detroit Lions safety. That was actually, surprisingly, that was actually one of the top fifteen free agent moves in the Cowboys history. And that's it, guys. So the Cowboys signed Dak Prescott to a deal that was team-friendly early on, but they kept restructuring it, okay? They restructured it first year to 17. They restructured it to 19 the second year. They restructured it the last year to $26 million. And what you have to understand is that money gets kicked down the road. So the reality is, is Dak Prescott's contract is not what's holding them back. What's holding them back is themselves because they can do whatever they want to do. They can do Dak Prescott's deal and like every other team, kick the money down the road so that way you have cap relief. I've said that they can easily get $30 million if they want to for this year. You add that to the five that they have, plus the other nine and a half that they're going to get. You know, now all of a sudden you got fifty-five million. The reality, though, is is 
the big name free agents are gone unless you're going to make trades, which is still a possibility. But the question you have to ask is, why the hell do the Dallas Cowboys constantly wait to do these deals? Why do we sit here and wait and say, we'll get it done in August? Why do you keep pushing it off? The price isn't going to go down in the same sense that had you, after year three, got his deal done instead of paying $31 million on a franchise tag, you would have gotten ahead of it and paid him less money. Had you gone ahead and last year got his deal done instead of restructuring it, because here's where you, this is where I want you to understand. This is where it's stupid because they restructured his deal to get cap relief last year. Had they done his deal last year, you probably would have had that same number last year and you wouldn't have the 59 that you're dealing with this year. And this is the problem for the Cowboys is they're always waiting for something and I don't know what it is. We're still waiting till August. And then people say, well, Dak Prescott should take a team-friendly deal. Well, when you see Tyron Smith go, when you see Zeke go, when you end up seeing Lyle Collins go, when you see Amari Cooper go, and you don't see moves made to come back, if you're Dak Prescott, why should you take a discount? If I'm going to be here and be the, you know, the, the, the fall guy, and you're not going to do anything with the money, then why should I take a discount? To line your pockets? Because we just saw what the Cowboys did the last time they got cap relief. They don't do anything. So let's listen in to one of the dumbest pundits out there, and that would be Dan Urlousy. Tax extension is holding my Cowboys back. Is that fact? Money, 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 money. The Cowboys were inactive in free agency in part because of the $60 million, now $55 million dollar potential cap hit. Now, I know there's the, we have to pay CeeDee Lamb, we have to pay Micah Parsons reality for them as well, but the number for the salary quarterback-wise is just exponentially higher than it, you know, needs to be given how many starters are missing from this football team right now, and I think that's going to be the reason why there's so much unknown. And okay, let's, let's, let's be clear here. Let's be clear here. Because when he says you have to pay CD Lamb, understand that CD Lamb's contract is $17.8 million right now. If they get the extension done for CD Lamb, they will end up creating about $10 million more cap room for this season. Understand, CD Lamb saves you money getting it done than keeping it where it is. So the idea and the notion of, well, they got to get rid of Dak because they got to sign CD. And if that were true, if you get rid of Dak, why are you keeping the CD? You ain't got nobody to throw to him. It's kind of like Justin Jefferson right now with Sam Darnold throwing to him. You're not going to get the maximum out of that guy with Sam Darnold. But go on, Dan. Hesitation about who Dallas is going to be next year because they got holes on their football team. And right now, through really the majority of free agency, they're incapable of filling them. All right, so Graz, give me a, a timeline on a Dak Potential, potential extension. Well, it, it could happen any time in, really in the next year, right? Like the, the deadline really is the last day of the league year, so like March 13th of next, of next year, because uh, that's when the remaining years of his contract will void and they'll be stuck with a $40 million dead money charge on next year's cap, uh, and he won't, won't even be on. season i don't Wait, feel like they feel what? Like not restructure and add money to future years i, I think they, they they prefer if they can to carry the cap hit this year it's going to be tough but I, I it's not impossible given where the cap went am i right so. to assume then that you're saying they would prefer to just have him play this last year on the deal yeah well i mean i think if they could get to an extension they would do it but gotcha. if they don't i don't think they're going to do the restructure just I gotcha. to save cap space this year you say it's holding them back i guess my question would be from what? Like they never do anything in free agency. I mean, they but, prefer the. I mean, maybe they don't make 
Big moves in free yeah. agency, but they didn't do anything. And, well, it's not over. But, Graz, they have five starters. They, yeah. they, they're down five starters. They yeah, only got four picks true. in the top five rounds. Yeah. I hear you. You do the math. But they're like, still guys. I mean, last year. This is nothing new, guys. For, like, Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. Like, you can still find guys after the first two or three days of free agency. Of course, but we're, we're three weeks in. So, yeah. I mean, let's, let's see how many guys are available to potentially make we'll trades on. Steph is still. I'm just, I'll, my point is, I'm not sure what else they would be doing if Dak's cap number was 10 million instead of 55. And you, you there you go. Thank you. Moved on from Dak. I said it the day after the Green Bay game. I would have moved on from everyone, though. I mean, you, at some point, you realize this, this version is as good as we are going to be. And part of it was knowing what was down the line financially. Part of it was knowing, understanding the $60 million. <laughs> I love and this. And in sitting there going, okay, well, he's a good quarterback. He's had moments of really good quarterback play. But we, for some reason, as a team, can't get past who we have to get past to to achieve the ultimate goal. If they were serious about winning Super Bowls, was there, and I know there's a no trade clause in his contract, but players waive no trade clause for certain situations. Is there a way where they could have moved on from Mike McCarthy, traded Dak Prescott, regained assets, and built the football team up and maybe got a different player at quarterback that did different things in different <laughs> situations, right? Like, I think that's the reality. Oh, the shit. They, they, in many ways, peaked this version. Nick, I saw you shaking your head. Because I thought he said move on from everybody. Like, that, if that isn't the <laughs> biggest knee-jerk overreaction. Like, Dan's been on point all day. You almost made it through an entire two-hour show without saying anything ridiculous. I was proud <laughs> of you and agreeing with you. And now you said move on from everybody? Because you lost a playoff game? Like, let's cool it. They are, I mean, they're on the doorstep of winning a championship. I'm not saying that they can't improve. But the idea that because they got upset in a game last year that they didn't need to move on from everybody, and obviously the quarterback, the hardest position to fill, they've been fortunate to go from Tony Romo to Dak Prescott. And before that, they were in the wilderness. So I'm not sure they want to go back to that place. And we all understand how important that position is. But you said everybody. You didn't just say Dak. You're talking about restart the whole organization, like CD, Micah, everybody. Get them out. We start over. No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't imply CD and Micah. I, I kind of implied head coach and quarterback. I'm okay. Two things, Dom. They're not on the doorstep of a championship because their football team roster-wise is worse than the one we've seen win three seasons of 12 straight games. That's the reality. The talent has left. And has not it? all of it, but some of it. And the second thing is they didn't lose. They got absolutely demolished. They didn't even show up, both like play-wise and preparation-wise. Mike T, what are your thoughts? Yeah, they have a really good problem to have, which is <laughs> Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, they all need extensions. That's going to be a massive amount of their cap allocation. So I understand why they're sort of holding serve. Now, look, do I think, don't go Derrick Henry, maybe A.J. Dillon, absolutely, maybe around the edges, but... The core of this team, I'm with Nick on this, 12 games a year, the last three years, that's really hard to do. And the only way, Brian, at the end of the day, you're going to have meaningful leverage with uh, Dak Prescott, the way they did with Tony Romo, sort of pass the torches, go draft Spencer Rattler in the second or third round and develop the next guy. Because until you have a meaningful replacement, Dak Prescott has right really, like, unlimited leverage because he is a winning NFL quarterback. And the alternative for most teams isn't pretty so that's really the so only way they're going to gain leverage, like the leverage and look they're going to have to draft an offensive lineman in round one we know that um but beyond that look for a quarterback and that's the way you could turn the tide have we forgotten that they they have trey lance there remember when we, they got trey lance everybody was like, like, here we go they take over Dak prescott and now you guys are talking I mean, about trey lance doesn't play football like consistently yeah. in like five years i mean that's, that's your that was just a flyer. Like they took a yeah. flyer on a young, talented guy, and if he shows something, then then maybe down the road. But no, they're not. They're not thinking of him as the successor. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll and the see. leverage has held them back. I yeah. mean, that, there is the truth, Mike T. You know this, Graz. Like okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get on my soapbox and literally say it. Literally, is not holding them back. Sorry, it's the Joneses holding them back. Let's make clear here: <clears throat> when a New Orleans, <coughs> excuse me. A New Orleans team can be $73 million in the red and still have double the amount of cap space that the Cowboys have. Let you know that the Cowboys aren't working the system like others. That the Cowboys 
are making crucial errors when it comes to contracts. They constantly wait till the last minute when it costs you more. What are you waiting for with C.D. Lamb? Are you waiting for Justin Jefferson to get his money so it'll cost you more? Are you waiting about, you know, to see if, you know, somebody else, if they decide, Pat Mahomes, we're going to redo your contract and give you a big extension and and pay you 65? Are you waiting to see the next generation of quarterbacks get paid and then you have to pay more money? This is on the Joneses. You can listen to Dan Your Lousy if you want to, who says they just need to move on, where you're going to pay $90 million for the next two seasons, $90 million, and not have a quarterback. Yes, that's that, that that's it. But this problem didn't get here because of Dak. This problem got here because of the Cowboys' ineptitude with managing the cap and and contracts, and waiting to get these things done. I know fans are going to say, it's just Dak. But you can't honestly look and see the players, the journeymen, players that the Cowboys constantly bring in every year, whether they have money or not, and expect Dak Prescott to be able to do the Super Bowl. Not when you see a San Francisco team fail, when they're going out and signing great players on loaded rosters. <clears throat> Sorry, you just can't compete doing that with the big dogs. Are right, you good people. I appreciate you as always. Peace out.